Hey, today my social media guys are finally gonna let me do some welding. We're gonna run some cheap versus expensive welding rod here. See how it goes. The size of the purchase helps determine the cost, of course, but then it's also brand name. Thinking Nike or Adidas, Ford, Chevy, Lincoln Miller. The brand is gonna determine the cost as well. We've got the cheaper brand here, Harbor Freight. You know it's gonna be good for your farmers and your ranchers and your, your local do-it-yourself shop welders. We've got some Lincoln Excalibur, which is what we use at the school. This is 1 8 inch. High-end rod, Lincoln's about like anything else. Anything with welding, they're, they're right at the top. I've made many x-rays with Lincoln Excalibur and some off-brands. There's a few welds out there I've made that were off-brand welding rod that uh, worked pretty good, but I've never actually had an x-ray done with something as discounted as the Harbor Freight brand. Since I've welded with quite a few different rods, the thing I'm usually looking for is your puddle clarity. I've had some higher end rods. I can't remember what brand it was, but it was fairly expensive. We had to kind of switch. On the job we were on, we had to switch rods for whatever reason. And we went from Lincoln Excalibur to another rod. The other rod was quite a bit more expensive because some alloy elements they put in there. But anyways, both 7018. The rod we went to, higher end, the puddle was super muddy. The slag wouldn't get out of your way. It was really kind of hard to see the edges of that puddle. Excalibur, it's clear, super crystal clear. It's good for all weather with exception. You gotta block it from the wind, of course, but. So puddle clarity, spatter. Uh, some rods, whatever they do to them, they tend to spatter a lot more. How easy they fire up. Some rods, the cheaper they get, the harder they are to start. In fact, I think this one here says not good for machines with low open current voltage, meaning you need quite a bit of voltage to get it, get it rolling before you can start welding. I also look for when I'm done welding, how easy that slag comes off. Some of the lower end rods, you can't beat that slag off of there with without a jackhammer, it, it is hard to get off of there. What are the test parameters we're gonna be doing? We wanna have the same amperage, right? So we wanna, we wanna run apples to apples. We're gonna run the same size diameter. We're gonna run eighth inch to eighth inch. I got some eighth inch Lincoln Excalibur. I got some eighth inch Vulcan from Harbor Freight. So we're gonna run the same range on the two eighth inch rods, but then that way you can see what, what the beads look like when they're all done. I think we're gonna start a weld with each rod. We're gonna get the camera in there as close as we can and see if we can see how clear the puddles are. Of course, the camera hardly does it justice. It, it's hard to get that part done, but we'll see how clear the puddles are. We're gonna see how nice the slag comes off. We'll let it cool off and see if that slag peels up like 7018 should. We'll also see how easy they start. Now, I know how Excalibur start. That's one of their calling cards is how easy it is to start and restart. If anybody knows anything about 7018, makes a coating on the end of that rod when you go to restart it. If you don't know what you're doing, you'll never get that thing to fire again. So let's talk about the spatter on these. Excalibur, there's very little spatter. If you do get spatter on Excalibur, it's usually because you ran over some garbage. The Vulcan, it was pretty smooth. There were some spots there where just the scale on the plate caused it to pop and spatter, and I got some specs. It was a little more spattery than I like. I think some of that's attributed to the heat difference. The Vulcan, at 120 amps, it's on the hotter end of that rod, where Excalibur at 120 amps, I could have used another five or 10 amps. I think it was kind of, Maybe right in the middle of the road, but, but I, I felt like it could have been a little hotter. I think the expensive one this round. So let's go over the slag. It was a tie. The slag peeled off each one the same, kind of like 7018 supposed to. You get your heat right, you get travel speed right, arc length right, and the slag will peel right off as you're welding. They both did that. I could scrape them off without any effort whatsoever. Okay, how about the puddle clarity? To be honest with you, that Vulcan was a pretty clear puddle, uh, surprisingly so. Again, I think that was a heat issue. I think uh, we we're on the upper end of that Vulcan heat on the mid, uh, maybe mid lower of the Excalibur. Excalibur looked like Excalibur to me. I've welded hundreds of miles of that stuff, so I know what the puddle looks like. A little bit more muddy than that Vulcan though, for sure. I would say the Vulcan actually, actually won that round in the puddle clarity division. <laughs> So about how different did they start? Like I said, 7018 starts a little different than other rods. The Vulcan, they, they put a coating 
on the tip of that rod. I don't know if you can see it, but I don't know, some sort of coating on there to help it start. I think it's probably a beginner rod for helping people who don't weld a whole lot, maybe doing stuff around the house. When I fire it up and I got down into the start of that weld, I could hear it really popping and snapping and crackling and kind of carrying on down there at the beginning. And I think it was because of that hot start feature they have on the rods. Excalibur starts up just as smooth as any other 7018. When you fire that thing up, it's ready to go. So you strike an arc with Excalibur, you get your start going, it doesn't pop, snap, or crack. It just gets moving. So Excalibur beat them hands down on that one. When you restart, of course, like every 7018, there's a coating on the end when you're ready to restart a used rod. You gotta break that coating off. A lot of beginners, they'll take their rod out of their stinger beat the coating off and then get rolling. I don't do that. I just tap and scrape at the same time and eventually get it to go Excalibur. Two taps and a scrape and it, it fired up. The Vulcan, uh, it was a little bit tougher and it wasn't quite as smooth once it started to get going. I think it beat some of that flux off of there. Who won the whole thing? Vulcan, I think the clear puddle worked out for it. However, the spatter was a little bit excessive. The startup was a little bit strange. It didn't work very good. Slag was a tie, right? So Vulcan's got two strikes, Excalibur, tried and true. The reason there's multi-billion dollar industries using Excalibur and those higher end rods. Puddle wasn't as clear, which is surprising. I was expecting something different, but the restart was smooth, smooth as ever. Spatter was limited. Uh, I think they designed that in because when you're welding high pressure pipe, you can't have a bunch of spatter outside of the weld zone. And the slag, slag peeled off like 7018 slag supposed to peel off. So with all that said, I, I think the, the Excalibur won all the way around, but it makes sense. They designed that for big industry. You know, if you're gonna use something at the shop and you don't need a 50 pound can of eighth inch 7018 Excalibur, Go get you a two pound bundle of the uh, Vulcan. It'll do what you need it to do. I don't know how many times I've said this. If you like the content and it was helpful, like, subscribe, follow, hit the notification bell. Maybe it's in here. I don't know where they can put that thing, but you know how it goes. Make the next weld better than the last.